the ACC sucks. The ACC always sucks, right? Conference rankings here at the Voice of College Football for 2023. Let's break it down together. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. All right, the ACC, let's run through the metrics. This is not going to be a series where I just say, you know what? Uh, the SEC is the best, the Big Ten's next, and so forth and so on. No, we are breaking down the results, specifically the Power Five conferences, the Pac-12. You're still in play. You're still alive here at the Voice of College Football for a few more days at least. And we compare the results based on the seeding. So keep in mind that if the Big Ten defeats the Big 12 in a particular game, well, it means something if, let's say, the fifth best team in the Big Ten defeats the fifth best team in in the Big 12. That means a whole lot more than if the best team in the Big 10 defeats the worst team in the Big 12. So records are the starting point, but we've got to uncover uh, the results and the meaning of the results and the weightiness of each game. So we first seed the teams in the ACC, and we do this not based on my evaluation of the teams, but based on the standings. And the seedings in the ACC look like this. Florida State, of course, number one. Louisville, two, as the ACC championship game rep. NC State at three, Georgia Tech at four, Virginia Tech five, Clemson six, North Carolina seven, Dukes eight, nine, Miami, 10, BC, Syracuse at 11, Pitt at 12, Virginia 13, and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, the last seed in the ACC. Again, that's based on conference record, of course, first and foremost, also based on overall record and the ties are broken by head-to-head -head competition, then by the overall record. Now let's look at the wins posted by the ACC against the rest of the Power Five. Probably the best win in the conference was Florida State, a one seed against LSU, a four seed, 45-24. The final score is the Seminoles won on opening weekend. Florida State over Florida, one over a 10 in the SEC. Louisville with a couple nice wins over Indiana and against Notre Dame. And uh, we note the LSU and Notre Dame wins by the ACC as being two of the best wins in college football non-conference, as well as this one, Clemson at home against Notre Dame. And this checks another box. This is a lower seed defeating a higher seed. Now, Notre Dame different than everybody else in college football because they can't be seeded to a certain extent. But by default, we're giving Notre Dame a number three seed. Uh, everybody else seeded based on their record within the conference. But Notre Dame, we're going to throw them a three seed as a top 10 to 15 team in college football at 10 and three. Clemson also not some decent non-conference wins against South Carolina and against Kentucky. We've got North Carolina with that opening weekend win against South Carolina, 31-17. to They also defeated Minnesota, so the Heels did good work for the ACC outside the conference. Duke over Northwestern didn't seem like a big game against a decent team at the time. Northwestern coming off that 1-11 campaign in 2022, but the Wildcats turned out to be a good team, and that is a... Higher seeded win for the ACC, Duke the eight seed over Northwestern. The Wildcats finished at eight and five, number five seed in the Big Ten, and Duke won it by 24 points. Miami over Texas A&M, nice win for the ACC at Hard Rock. Even though the Aggies finished at seven and six, they were the seven seed in the ACC. Syracuse defeated Purdue. Wake with a win as the lowest seed in the ACC. They get a win over the lowest seed in the SEC in that battle of giants, Wake and Vandy. Georgia Tech over UCF. That was a bowl game in which Georgia Tech trailed 14-0 in the first quarter. The four seed defeated the nine seed in the Big 12, 30-17. When you add it all up, those games won by the ACC and the Power Five had a 6.4 seeding average against teams that averaged a 9.4 seeding. So that makes total sense. Typically, the higher seed, the better team, wins the game. In those 13 games, ACC teams outperformed the other four conferences by 185 points. That's 14.2 points per game. Those ACC wins. Now let's look at the losses by the ACC against the other four conferences. This may take a while. There were 18 against the 13 wins against the other conferences. Start out by Florida taking on Georgia in the Orange Bowl. We know that there's a lot of disclaimers concerning this game with the opt-outs, but we are going with results. Number one, Florida State lost to number two, Georgia. 
as uh, the Bulldogs, of course, lost the SEC championship game but won this matchup against FSU 63-3. to Louisville lost a couple non-conference games. They lost to Kentucky on the last day of the season. Kentucky an eight seed in the SEC. They also lost to USC, the six seed out of the Pac-12, that game at the Holiday Bowl, 42-28. NC State with a couple out-of-conference losses. So the top teams in the ACC losing some non-conference games here. North Carolina State lost by 21 to Notre Dame at home. They also lost a bowl game to Kansas State as... uh, The uh, Wildcats were a five seed in the Big 12. So that's already four higher seeded teams in the ACC losing to lower seeded teams outside the conference. Georgia Tech, the four seed, surprisingly, the Yellow Jackets, a four seed in the ACC, got blown out in the fourth quarter at Ole Miss, the three seed out of the SEC. They also lost to the number two seed in the SEC, Georgia. So Georgia Tech had a rough, rough non-conference go. Virginia Tech with a couple of non-conference losses to Purdue and Rutgers out of the Big Ten. North Carolina, of course, lost the bowl game by a 30-10 count to West Virginia, the sixth seed out of the Big 12. Duke lost to Notre Dame in a really good football game at home, 21-14. Miami lost to Rutgers in the pinstripe bowl. You've got a pit loss three times out of conference to Power 5 teams, West Virginia, Cincinnati, and also Notre Dame. They lost that game by 51 points to the Irish. Virginia on opening weekend lost to Tennessee 49-13. They also lost to Maryland early in the season by four touchdowns. And, of course, Wake Forest, uh, another game against Notre Dame, is of course, Notre Dame plays that ACC five or six games each year, and Wake Forest lost it by 38. Put it all together, and in these 18 losses, The seeding average for the ACC was 7.1 versus a 5.8. So there's a seeding difference of about one and a half seeds, but take into consideration the ACC lost all 18 of these games, and they lost these games by 374 points or over 20 points per game. So that's where the analysis starts. The most important games, the most meaningful games played against Power 5 competition. However, There are solid group of five teams. So did you notch some wins against uh, some of the better teams in the group of five, which we know to be better than some power five teams. So it's not a complete all the power fives are better than all the group of fives, although about 85% of them are. There are some valuable group of five games, so we don't want to discount those or discard those and not count them. We want to look at the group of five wins and also Did your particular conference suffer some embarrassing group of five losses? And for the ACC, it looks like this. 16-5 and against the group of five. The most meaningful wins, the most impressive wins would be North Carolina over App State as these two get together on a regular basis. That App State team finished at 9-5. and Boston College, after not playing any Power 5 non-conference games, took on SMU in bowl play and defeated the Mustangs, who won the American Conference at 11-3. So nice win for the ACC and BC. Virginia Tech, likewise, against the American Conference champions from 2022, an 11-2 football team before they lost the bowl game by 21 points to Virginia Tech. We can also note that Michael Pratt, the starting quarterback for Tulane, missed that game, but we know what the deal is during bowl play. All right, how about those embarrassing losses for the ACC? They have probably suffered more... Mm, I don't know. It's a tough, tough comparison between the ACC and the Pac-12 in recent years, suffering embarrassing losses against the group of five. Let's look at the ACC against G5 competition. BC lost to Northern Illinois. They almost lost to Holy Cross. That would have been an FCS loss for the ACC. Virginia lost to James Madison. Now, James Madison, one of the very best group of five teams. Virginia, one of the worst Power five, and that was a 36 35 loss, so no shame there. But Georgia Tech again finished five and three in the ACC, and they lost to Bowling Green, a seven and six football team out of the MAC. Virginia Tech lost to Marshall, the Hokies making a regularity out of losing to group of five teams. Marshall only finished at six and seven, and Syracuse, of course, in the bowl game got completely annihilated by South Florida, 45 to nothing. So the ACC, once again, 42-23 and 23 non-conference record. 
That is 13 and 18 against Power 5 competition, 16 and 5 against the group of five. That's not really a strong record. 13 and 0 against the FCS, those should be automatic wins. How good is that? Well, we don't know yet. We're going to run through the rest of the power conferences and then size it all up. Next up, the Big 12.